Hello boys and girls, so today we move on to the last subtopic in topic 8. We have 8.6 diffraction gratings or it refers to multiple slit. Before this, we have already discussed about the interference for double slit. Then we have diffractions of single slit. Now we are going to move on on multiple slits. So, what is diffraction grating? Actually, diffraction grating is defined as a device with a very large number of equally spaced parallel slits. It can be made by ruling very fine parallel line on glass or metal by a very precise machine. For example, this one, teacher zoom in. You can see very clearly, groove are cut out at a regular spacing. Okay, now, this is what we call diffraction grating. We have a very large number of equally spaced parallel slits. So this is the line. This is the line. So the untouched space, the untouched space between the line will serve as the slits. Okay, so the untouched spacing between two lines, that one will serve as a slit. The line will pass us through the slit because the grating is transparent. So, boys and girls, the separation between two neighboring slits is what we call slit separation. We denote by D. So, how we calculate the slit separation is given by D equal to 1 over N. So, how to use these equations? For example, I have a grating level as 600 lines per millimeter. So, 600 line per millimeter is referred to the N. Numbers of line per millimeter. So, how I find the slit separations? So, I'm going to have D equal to 1 over N. So, the N is how much? 600 line per millimeter. So, I write it as 600 per millimeter, so millimeter minus 1. So when I do the calculations, I'll get the slit separation is 1.67 to the power of negative 3 millimeter. But in physics, we normally express the unit in SI unit meter. So I change it to meter. So milli times 10 negative 3 meter. So I'll get the slit separation is 1.67 to the power of negative 6 meter. So this is how we calculate the slit separations from the, num from the numbers of line per millimeter or numbers of line per meter that we that label on the grating. So sometimes slit separation also known as grating spacing. Okay, so grating spacing actually is referred to the slit separation. The separation between the two adjacent slit in a diffraction grating. So grating might operate in reflections or transmission. So basically, we have two types of diffraction grating, which are transmission grating. For example, the usual tra tra diffraction gratings that we use in the lab, the muslin crude, the CD, the DVD, if the reflecting layer is being peeled off, that one we consider as transmission grating, whereby the light can pass through. Then we have another type of grating we call reflections grating. For example, the surface of a CD and DVD. So, diffraction grating is used in spectrometer to determine the wavelength of light and to study spectra. So, how we form the diffraction grating pattern? So I have a magnified view of the grating whereby we have N slit with spacing D 
So when monochromatic light is incident on the diffraction grating, each slit, each slit will act as secondary source according to the Huygens principle, and they were emitting large number of secondary white light. So these diffracted secondary white light, they will interfere each other. See, they will interfere each other. So as the light fall on a distant screen, it will form central bright fringe n equal to zero and higher order bright fringes and start count from plus minus one, plus minus two, plus minus three on or so forth on either side of our central bright fringe. These bright fringes are due to the constructive interference and sometimes we call it as maxima. So this is the diffraction pattern from a grating or we call it, we known as multiple slit. So we are going to have narrow and bright fringes as shown in this figure. This is the light intensity. So at the center, right in front, right opposite to the center of the grating, we have our central maxima n equal to zero. Then on either side of our central maxima, we are going to have our first maxima follow with second maxima. Okay, and so forth. So, for some arbitrary direction theta measure from the horizontal, each of these rays will travel a dis different distance to a common point on the screen far away. As seen in the figure above, each ray will travel a distance d psi theta difference from that of its neighbor. So, this slit compared with the neighbor slit, they will have a path difference of, they are going to have a path difference of d psi theta where d is the slit separation. So if this distance equal an integral number of wavelength, we will find out that the ray O will arrive in phase and we will obtain a constructive interference or maxima. So, in general, the angle associated with the n order maxima is given by d psi theta equal to n lambda. So how, how we find the angle whereby we will obtain our first maxima? What is the angle for us to obtain the second maxima? We can calculate using this equation d sin theta equal to n lambda. Then class remember sin theta can never be greater than 1. Therefore, there is a limit to the numbers of order that can be obtained. We won't obtain numbers of order until infinity. There is a limit. And the limitation is sine theta can never be greater than 1. So, the highest order that can be observed in a diffraction rating pattern is limited by the fact that our ang angle cannot be exceed 90 degrees. Why 90 degree? Because sine theta can never be greater than 1. Angle for sine theta equal to 1 is 90 degree. Okay, so sine theta cannot be greater than 1, never can be greater than 1. So we write down the conditions, the limitations. Sine theta n must be less than 1. So sine theta is, we rearrange this equation. So the sine theta will be n lambda over d. So I put it here, n lambda over d will be less than 1. So arrange, so n will be less than d over lambda. Okay, so this is the equation for us to determine the highest order that we can observe for a diffraction rating given. So class n is referred to the order number starting from 1, 2, 3 and so forth. 
D is referred to the slit separation or the grating spacing, whereby the grating spacing can be calculated using equation 1 over N. N is referred to the number supply per unit length. Lambda, lambda is the wavelength of the incident light. Theta is the angle associated with N order maxima. So class, from the equation given, our highest order that we can observe is always less than d over lambda, whereby d is 1 over n. So the numbers of order that we can see, n, it depends on the grating spacing or the numbers of line per unit length of the grating and also what flank. So, for example, if I have a grating with n equal to 600 line per millimeter, this is the diffraction pattern that I obtain. So, the middle is what we call the central maxima. The central maxima is the brightest, n equal to 0. Then we have on either side, first maxima follow with second maxima, third maxima. So, the numbers of order that we can obtain is 3. But the numbers of maxima that we can see on screen, it will be 2n plus 1. Why? Because the order or the maxima can occur on either side of the central maximum. So, the numbers of maximum that we can see on screen will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 on either side of the central maxima plus 1. This one, this number 1 actually is referred to the central maxima. Alright, so the numbers of maxima that we can obtain is 7, 7, okay. So, you can check your understanding what is the maximum order number that can be seen on the screen for n equal to 300 line per millimeter. So, class, the highest order that we can observe also depends on the wavelength that we use. Whereby, we find out that the highest order that can be observed is inversely proportional to the wavelength. The longer the wavelength, the highest order that we can observe will be less. So, let us observe through this diagram. So, as you can see, I show you the direction pattern for three wavelengths. Wavelength blue light, green light and also red light. So we will find out that as the wavelength becomes longer, the numbers of order that can be observed for each of these light will become less. Let us count. For the blue light, 455 nanometer. So start from the central bright. So we can observe 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 order. For the red light, sorry, for the green light, Start from the center, the central maxima. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So we can observe five order for green light. What about red light? So start from the central maxima. So we obtain one, two, three, four. So we can only obtain four orders for the red light. So we can see obviously from the diffraction pattern here, as the wavelength become longer, the highest order, the numbers of order, sorry, the numbers of order that we can observe will become less. Then we might also have diffractions of white light. When white light or sunlight fall on a grating, you will have a rainbow of color is produced at each principal maximum, one, two, and so forth on either side of the central fringe. The central maximum, n equal to zero, however, is a white color because all the color overlap there. 
Why we will get rainbow color on either side? This is because the white light contain wavelength between violet and red. Different color have different wavelength, so the different color will be reinforced at different angle because we have this equation A sin theta equal to N sorry D sin theta equal to N lambda. So the angle theta depends on proportional to wavelength. So the crater wavelength are going to diffract to a crater angle. So I put all the pattern we have already discussed so far in this topic in one slide so you can compare the pattern so can you can distinguish it. This is the pattern we have for double slip. This is the single slip. This is diffraction grating using a monochromatic light. Monochromatic light means the light consists of one wavelength only. And this is the diffraction grating pattern we obtain if we use white lights, whereby we will get the rainbow spectrum on either side of the central bright. Then before we end our videos, we go for one example See how we are going to apply the concept we discussed so far. So, given the monochromatic light from a helium neon laser, the wavelength is 632.8 nanometer, its incident normally on the diffraction rating containing 6000 light per centimeter. So, A, find the angle at which the second order is observed. So, we want to find the second order maximum. Where, where will our, where will be our second order maxima observed on screen? So, first thing when you have a diffraction grating, you must calculate the grating spacing. So first step, we calculate the grating spacing first. So grating spacing will be one over. N. N is referred to the numbers of light per unit length. So we have 6,000 light per centimeter. So I have 1 over 6,000 centimeter minus 1. So I get 1.667 to the power of negative 4 centimeter. So centimeter, I change it to meter. So my spacing rating or grating spacing will be 1.667 to the power of negative 6 meter. Then only I calculate the angle in which the second order will be observed. So d sin theta equal to n lambda. So I will calculate the angle for the second maxima. So my n is equal to 2. My n is equal to 2. Put in the other's value for lambda and also the slit separation or the grating spacing. Then I'll get my angle for the second order to be observed is 49.4 degree. Then B, how many maxima line can be observed? So, our highest order that we can obtain is always less than D over lambda. So, D is 1.667 to the power of negative 6. Wavelength is 632.8 to the power of negative 9. So I'll get that. My n, the highest order that can be observed, is less than 2.63. It means that the highest order that we can obtain is 2. Okay, so I visualize this. So at the center, we also have central maxima. Then I have n equal to 1, n equal to 2 on either side, on either side, okay? So the total maximum line that can be observed will be 2n plus 1. Why 2n? Because the order maxima, the maximum order uh, is occurs on either side, either side of our central maxima. So 2 times 2 plus 1, so the total maximum line that we can observe is 5. 
So whereby we have the zero order maxima to each or first order either side and second order on either side. All right. So this is how we apply the concept we learn for diffraction grating into a problem or situation given. So, so class, you might attempt the question in your tutorial 8 that related to learning outcome 8.6. So we have discussed all the topics in our chapter 8. So for the next video, we are going to continue with our topic 9, whereby we will move on to, uh, to modern physics, whereby we have quantizations of lights. So boys and girls, thank you for your focus. I shall see you on the next topic. Thank you class.